In this video, we're gonna be looking at how you can create, manage, and maintain an NPM package automatically using the semantic release package. Let's get into it. For those of you who are new here, I'm Connor, I'm a full stack web developer from the UK, and in today's video, as mentioned, we're gonna be looking at semantic release and how we can use it to handle the entire NPM package publishing flow, including creating, maintaining, updating, and just general maintenance of a package, all from this one singular package. So what is semantic release? In their own words, semantic release automates the entire package workflow, it includes creating the package, distributing the package, calculating the next version, updating the change log, a whole raft of other things, including some plugins that have been made for it. So in this video, we're gonna be using it to create a very simple NPM package, which will then upload to GitHub. It will then calculate the next version for us based on our commit messages, and then distribute that to NPM publicly for people to install. For this tutorial, it doesn't really matter what package you're gonna be using. You could be using a custom package that you've written yourself, or like myself, you could be using NPM init Y and an index.js file just to demonstrate and learn how this publishing works using semantic release. So get started with this project, make a new directory anywhere on your laptop where you wanna create this project. And then you want to do an npm init hyphen y to create an npm package with a package json file you can just accept the defaults as we'll be changing those in a moment and then you want to do a git init as well to create it to a git repository so we can commit it later and upload it to github which is where all of this kind of magic will be happening with semantic release next steps is to create your index.js file in the root of the project this is the entry point to the package so if this was a more complex package you'd be using this file to export other things that you want to include, such as functions and classes and so on. But because this is just a tutorial, I'm gonna do some very basic variable console log here, move on. The code in here really isn't important, it's just to demonstrate how we can publish this to NPM. The next steps are to add a .gitignore file just to make sure we ignore the node modules and a few other things. This is just to ensure that when we're working with the package in a moment, we don't end up committing our node modules as per normal practices. So the first steps are inside your package.json file, you want to update a few fields. First of all, you want to update the author, so it's got your correct name in there and your email address. You also want to give it a unique name as this is the name that will be published to on NPM. So you want to make sure it's globally unique and it's not currently used. And then finally, you want to make sure to add a description so that people can easily read what it's about and so on. We will be adding a readme file as well later on. After we've set up our index.js file and what will be the contents of our package, we need to install some NPM packages to actually handle the publishing. This is where semantic release comes in. So we're going to install three dev dependencies, the first one being semantic release and the second two being plugins for semantic release. The first plugin being the git plugin and the second one being changelog. These two plugins will allow semantic release to one, create a changelog file in our project and update it based on the contents of our commit messages and two, the git plugin allows us to actually commit files into the repo and push and make changes all from the CI environment. So this is what allows us to check in the changelog file as well as any other files that we might change. The next steps after installing our plugins is to create our .release rc.json file in the root of our project. This is the configuration file for semantic release and lets us configure a few things. In this file, we tell semantic release what branches we want to point out. Just because this is a base example, we're going to be using just the main branch, but you could configure this to use a whole host of branches, such as beta branches and version branches. It gets very complex very quickly. But for our basic example, we're just going to be using the main branch. We then configure a few plugins for semantic release to use, including the two we just installed. But there are a few that come with semantic release already such as the GitHub plugin and the NPM plugin. These two plugins are gonna allow us to create releases on GitHub and actually do the publishing to NPM. The order is quite important, so make sure you follow what I've laid out here. You can also see at the end of the file, we've configured the Git plugin that we installed. This is just so we can commit in the files that we've changed, which is the package.json file and the changelog file. These are because both of these files will get updated during the release process to have the new version in, as well as the commit and release messages for that in the changelog. We then add a commit message for that, and then this will run at the end to wrap everything up nicely and commit it to our project. After we've then configured the semantic release with the .release rc file, we create one GitHub workflow called the release workflow. Inside this release workflow, we pass in two environmental variables to semantic release, one being the GitHub token, which is automatically present on the GitHub Actions environment, so we don't need to worry about anything there, and the other is our NPM token, which we'll be fetching in a moment from NPM. These two tokens are what allows semantic release to communicate with GitHub, and npm and do the necessary work to release the package on our behalf. At this point we've configured everything locally, we've set up the entire package, all the configuration files and the GitHub work. So we're now ready to create our repository on GitHub, push the files and then see what happens. 
So the first step is obviously head over to github.com, create a new repo, can be private or public, and name it as you wish. Once you've created your repository, head back over to your terminal and then commit the files. Make sure you pay attention to the commit messages you're using. We need to be using what's called conventional commits. I'll go into the entire details of conventional commits in this video, but it basically it's an entire specification that outlines what type of commit message you can use and how they relate to version numbers. This is what Semantic Release uses to calculate the next version. So in short, a bug fix commit will relate to a patch release, um, a feature commit will release to a minor release, and then a commit which uses the breaking changes message in the commit for relates to a major release on semantic release. At this point, your file should now be on GitHub. And if you take a look at the actions tab, you should notice that the release workflow has actually just been triggered because we've pushed to main. This also means our GitHub actions can figure correctly. And if you're like myself at this point, your release workflow might actually fail. This is because due to a permissions error, which we're now going to resolve. If you're like myself and your release workflow did fail, you may have an error message similar to mine, which is talking about permissions and how semantic release can't push to the Git repository. This is actually a very easy problem to fix. So head over to your settings of your GitHub repository, then under actions, general, and then workflow permissions. And you wanna make sure that read and write is selected, it isn't selected by default. And then once this has been enabled, our GitHub action for semantic release should be able to work just fine. So with our GitHub action issues resolved, we are now actually ready to test it. Before we can do our first test, we need to generate an NPM token to allow us to publish our NPM package. Head over to npmjs.com, log into your account or create one if you don't already have one. Then once inside your account, head over to access tokens under your user icon in the top right. Then once you're inside access tokens, we need to generate a new token using the classic token and then name it and select automation. Automation is important because it will let us skip any two-factor authentication when publishing the package. Once you have your new token value, make sure to keep it secret first of all, because it allows people to publish NPM packages to your account. Head over to your GitHub repo that you just created. Under settings, go to actions and then secrets, and then new repository secret, and then add your secret value in there with a name of NPM underscore token. The name is important because this is what we referenced earlier in our GitHub action workflow, and it's what semantic release will try and pull in to use for publishing to NPM. So make sure it matches. Configured, head over to your actions page and then rerun the last workflow that failed. Hi, note from future me after recording the video and was done. Um, you may actually notice that when you run the semantic release GitHub action workflow, it may error saying that you've exceeded the secondary API rate limit of GitHub on the success step of semantic release. But you'll notice if you go to the code tab and to NPM, the package release actually succeeded fine with no issues. Um, there is an open GitHub issue for this, which I'll open, link in the description down below. So check that out. It is seem to be going on and seems to be affecting quite a few people. Hopefully they are working on a fix for this. So I just wanted to know with this in the video that you may experience this and hopefully it will get resolved soon. If you have any other issues that were semantic release failing, make sure to drop them down below in the comments and I'll jump in and help. Carry on with the video. You'll know when the release process has completed because on the code page of your repository, you will see a version one release as well as a tag that points to the same version number. Also, you, if you head over to your NPM page and then under packages, you will see that the new package has been published there as well. So to round off the tutorial, as promised earlier, we're now gonna add a readme file because at present we don't have one and every good package should have a readme file. So to do this, head back over to your IDE with your code from earlier and a readme.md file with just some contents inside it. I'm just adding some example boilerplate stuff. Once you've made these changes, commit them. And then before you push, make sure you pull in the changes from main, just so you're in sync. And then you can push to main again with the new changes you've made. Once you've then pushed to main, it will then trigger the release action to run, in which case it will release a 1.01 release if you've done a bug fix. If not, it'll be a 1.1 if you did a feature commit. And then you can check your code page again in the repository as well as your npm page and you should see your new readme file there and that's it with the addition of our readme file we've just completed our tutorial and we've seen how to publish an npm package automatically from github action ci using semantic release if you'd like to see the write-up of this tutorial with the code snippets ready to copy and paste as well as a more detailed description of the steps involved then make sure to head over to the link down below or over to my website where i have the blog post version of this video I hope you found this tutorial helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.